Today we're going to be making kaya. So a key ingredient for this kaya is pandan. I've got this glorious fresh pandan leaves from Thailand. Now if you can't get fresh, chuck the frozen section in a Southeast Asian supermarket. Or if you can't get frozen, try online. You can't really make kaya jam without pandan because it's going to give it that unique aromatic flavour. So let's measure everything out. We're going to need some good quality eggs. I'm going to use about five here. Just give them a gentle whisk to break them up, just to beat up the eggs a little bit. We don't want to whisk in too much air. There we go, that's plenty. Right, grab yourself a bowl and pass the eggs just to get rid of some of the bubbles. Now, another key ingredient for coconut jam is obviously going to be coconut. Now, I'm not lucky enough to get hold of fresh coconut cream, but I'm going to get the best I can. Now, a little tip is to have a look when you're buying tinned coconut milk on the level of coconut extract it has or the ingredients it's got. So this one has a 53% in this particular brand, but it doesn't have anything else other than water and citric acid. Whereas this one for coconut cream, I'm like, oh, 91% coconut extract, that's great. But it's got a ton of emulsifiers and stabilizers in, which I don't really want in my kaya jam. So I'm just gonna use this one. Now, when you're using coconut milk, we want the thick, rich coconut cream. So don't shake your tins when you are going to use coconut milk because we want that thick coconut extract from the top rather than the coconut water, so. I'm gonna measure out 375 grams into a bowl. So I'm just gonna carefully take out that nice, thick, rich stuff off the top. You can use the coconut water, but it will just take a very long time to thicken. And you're not gonna get like that super rich kaya jam. And the whole name of kaya in Malay means rich, so we wanna get this super thick. So it's taken me about two tins to get a, like 375 grams of thick coconut cream there. But I'm not going to waste this coconut milk. I'm gonna put that into a smoothie or use it for a curry later on. Just make sure you use it within three days. Now I'm gonna measure out 200 grams of sugar. I'm gonna use white caster sugar. You can use palm sugar, you can use brown sugar, but traditionally it is used with white sugar because and it will dissolve much, much better. And I, I don't want the kaya jam to be too dark. I'm gonna use this here. So I'm gonna measure out 200 grams. I'm just gonna mix that with the coconut. Cause what I'm going to do is infuse this coconut with the pandan first, and then we're gonna temper or mix it into the egg yolks. Now to make our kaya jam, um, to make the kaya jam, I'm going to use a double boiler, which is basically like a pan within another pan. Um, you can also use a bamari, so a big pan underneath with a bowl on top. I'm gonna to put the coconut and the sugar into the smaller pan on the inside and really infuse that with the pandan flavor first. And then we're gonna mix in the eggs. You can just plonk it all in together, but I just want to get the maximum extraction from this pandan leaf before I put in the eggs. Let's get it all in there. So in that base, there's some water, which I'm gonna bring up to a heat. Right, so we want all that sugar to dissolve into the coconut milk, but I'm also gonna flavor it with some of this fresh pandan. Now, I'm gonna cut it up into smaller pieces just to give it a little bruise in, be a bit rough with it, and then cut it up. Smaller pieces, it's plenty. A lot of recipes out there for Kaya is like a 10 minute, 30 minute kaya recipe where they'll use maybe just egg yolks and whisk it all together in a pan on a low heat. But that is not a traditional kaya. A kaya is made in a double boiler just like this where an auntie, like yourself, would be stirring it for hours and hours. But that's gonna be quite a boring YouTube video for you guys watching me stir this for a couple of hours. Now kaya jam is wildly addictive because the amount of sugar inside of it um, my mum would actually purposely not order this for us or kept this a secret from me. Well, she thought it was a secret from me because 
in the copper tiams, she would, they would never order it because it's got so much sugar in it. And as a mother myself, I totally understand why. But what she doesn't know is that I would always say, sneak over to Yakun and get a little slice of Kaya toast by myself. So the sugar has now melted and dissolved completely in that coconut. And I've been bashing that coconut pretty well, giving it a good old smooshing. So it's really nicely bruised and that's come up to a nice boil. So what I'm going to do is add the coconut to the eggs and then whisk it. I'm not gonna put it all in once because what you don't want to end up is cooking that egg really quickly. It's what we call in the, in the kitchen temper. So we're just going to add a little bit. Now whisk in that coconut, warm coconut slowly and it's ready to go back into the double boiler. Now here comes the boring part of just stirring this over a low heat for quite a long while until that thickens. So I'm just continuously stirring this. I'm just using my thermopen thermometer right now because I don't want the temperature of these eggs, this kaya, to go above 83 degrees centigrade because that's at the point in which eggs start to thicken, cook and scramble. I'm just gonna keep stirring this until it reaches the right consistency for me. You can do it a little bit thinner, but come on, you guys you guys know me, I like it nice and thick. Really important to use a spatula and keep it moving, because otherwise you can it can sit still and it'll just scramble and you'll end up with scrambled eggs on the bottom. You're gonna have to make all the aunties proud by having a nice, thick, smooth kaya custard. And then we're gonna sweeten it or flavor it with either some pandan essence or a caramel, which is my personal favorite way of having kaya. Can you see it thickening up now? You could add corn flour, like some recipes into this to thicken this quicker, but that's cheating in my eyes. Let's do it the traditional way, or painstakingly stirring this for hours, or what feels like hours on the stove. And this is the reason kaya is such a pain to make because you're just stood here over the fire stove it's hot. There we go, it's starting to thicken now. Can you see that? It's very, very similar to making a curd, like a lemon curd. You've got eggs, sugar, and stirring it over a bain-marie or water. It's nearly there, so I'm gonna turn the heat off now. And the residual heat will still keep it cooking, but not overcook it. It's good to use, I highly recommend these thermometers because they have a very fast reading rather than using something like a meat thermometer or a sugar thermometer. You want to get something that's pretty accurate and fast reading. Okay, the kaya is now ready. I'm happy with the consistency. It's not fluid, it's nice and thick. So I've taken that off the heat and I've dunked that into some ice water. Even though I've taken it off the heat, that pot is going to retain a lot of heat as well as that kaya and it can still overcook if you don't keep an eye on it. I'm gonna pass it now through a sieve to remove that pandan leaves and any potential lumps that might be there. And you're left with this beautiful, smooth kaya. Now we've got this super silky, delicious kaya jam. Uh, this is like the base of it. You can definitely eat it as kaya toast as it is, but most people tend to like to flavor it a bit. So you can either use like pandan paste or an essence you can blend so the pan you can blend the pandan leaves to make like a juice out of it to get more of a natural pandan flavor to it which will turn the kaya quite a vibrant green color which some people love um, or you can have make a caramel which is one of my favorite ways of doing it um, do you guys want to see so i'm just heating up some white sugar into a caramel I'm gonna add some butter and salt to make it salted caramel. Because salt is always actually a lovely addition to sweet things to balance it out a bit. You want to get this caramel quite fairly dark, actually, to get that sort of rich honey caramel flavor in the kaya. Don't stir it, just keep it the pan moving like so. Now, if you burn the caramel, start again. Don't add it to your kaya. You'll be wasting all that hard work. Now you can whisk in your butter. I 
turn the heat off by the way so it doesn't cook anymore. Right, and then I'm just going to fold in this caramel really quickly. Now, when you fold it in the caramel, you're left with something that looks just like this. It's not too dark, it's not too light, it's not too thin, and it's not too thick where it's ad been added with cornstarch. If you want it thicker, you can add some cornstarch into this, but this is exactly what I like because I'd like it spread really nice and evenly over some toast. So let's grab some toast. I'm going to use some very standard white, thickly cut bread. If I had extra time, I would make my own sandwich tin bread, but, but I've run out of time today. So I'm gonna to toast this. Now we've got our toast and we're going to add the kaya. Some places, some copper tiams in Singapore actually toast their toast over charcoal, which is just incredible. Don't be too stingy with it. Salted butter. Let's add it on like so. Flip it over. Now for your traditional list, cut the crusts off. Some places actually squash it right down. Slice it in the middle. And then you're left with your kaya toast. And give it a good old squeeze. The important thing about kaya toast is having it when it's all still warm. Mm. So good. I love that salted butter with the caramel and the kaya. So you've got flavors of coconut, caramel, almost like honey, and then the most satisfying crunch and texture in my mouth. Mm. This is dripping. It is finger licking good. It is, if I had the time, I'm going to make some soft boiled eggs to dip that into, maybe for another time. So I'm gonna put the rest of that kaya into a sterilized jar and keep it in the fridge and it probably will last like one to two months. I mean, if you're lucky. I mean, if you're, my husband's and kids get hold of it, it won't last the week. But if you haven't got time to make kaya, if you're lucky enough to live in the UK, May May, we make our own kaya and we ship it nationwide. Now this stuff is highly addictive, so we probably should put like a little warning label. You might want to get more than one jar to satisfy that craving. I'll leave the information for the, ordering those in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this sweet treat this week and I'll see you next week. I just stood on some toast. <laughs>